Hello, my name is Natalie Lafranzo. I am the Vice President of Market Development at Cofactor Genomics. Uh, as by means of introduction, Cofactor is based in San Francisco with our clinical labs in St. Louis, Missouri. And we also have a Kendall Square office uh, here in Boston, which is where I'm broadcasting from. Uh, I'd like to take a minute to say thank you to the entire Amazon team for the opportunity to present in this session. And uh, I look forward to engaging with you during the virtual event. Uh, I need to add a quick disclaimer uh, as Cofactor offers uh, products and services that are for research use only, and these are not to be used in diagnostic procedures. And then we also offer clinical assays in our laboratory accredited by the College of American Pathologists. So please contact us uh, to discuss which option would be most appropriate for your specific application. We all have a story of how our lives have been touched by cancer, um, whether it's family, friends, or, or personally. And despite this, there's also so much excitement and expectation around the area of precision medicine. The idea that we can match the right patient with the right treatment at the right time. And initially, this precision medicine boom spurred an incredible uh, number of uh, new therapies that were developed, especially in, in the realm of cancer. And clinical trials for these new drugs, um, such as targeted therapies, cancer vaccines, and immunotherapies absolutely exploded. There's now thousands of trials that are started each year. However, our ability to find the right patients for these therapies has not evolved at the same rate. And so this has created what we call a precision medicine gap. And this precision medicine gap results from the fact that these new therapies, such as immune checkpoint inhibitors, are transformative and they provide lasting results for patients. However, they only work in a subset of patients. And this is the result of a more personalized approach to cancer therapy. And so what's needed here are technologies that are capable of playing matchmaker. So we don't treat patients with therapies that won't work and that may even have painful or debilitating side effects. And these matchmaking technologies are called predictive diagnostics and they are the key to bridging this precision medicine gap. And because of its impact on both patients and payers, this gap represents one of the biggest threats to healthcare, but it's also one of the biggest opportunities to make an impact. Unfortunately, this gap continues to grow. So the data shown here is for immune checkpoint inhibitors. The discovery of the underlying mechanisms behind this class of medicines was actually awarded the 2018 Nobel Prize in Medicine, and it's made an enormous impact in oncology. The percentage of patients with cancer who are eligible to receive these checkpoint inhibitor drugs is currently around 50%, but only 15% of all these patients actually respond to therapies. And so while we continue to expand the patient populations eligible for treatment, the number of patients who respond to these treatments is growing at a much slower rate. And so because of this, the gap continues to widen and the need for a predictive diagnostic is even more clear. If we can implement a solution to this, it's a big win for both the patients and their treating physicians with over 800,000 new cases of cancer diagnosed annually who are eligible for these therapies and improving the outcomes for these patients and setting realistic expectations during their treatment plans is so important. And further, there's a cost of treatment plans that don't work. If we can avoid giving patients therapies they won't respond to, we save money on both the therapy and the avoided adverse events. While clinicians have been using a variety of macroscale or visible biological signals to make treatment decisions for hundreds of years, it's only within the last few decades that we've moved this into the molecular level with molecular diagnostics. And these molecular signals are also known as analytes. And most diagnostic, diagnostics on the market today look at a single analyte to make a clinical decision. Unfortunately, this single analyte world has failed us and it's not enabling us to close the precision medicine gap. The discipline of predictive immune modeling is moving medicine from the single analyte world to this new world of multidimensional models of disease. So what's changed about the state of technology that enables us to accomplish this? Well, first is the need for precision medicine. These new therapies are more personalized, only work in a subset of patients. The second is advances in technology such as RNA sequencing, where we can look at degraded samples in a high throughput manner as well as cloud computing um, advancements with resources like those offered by AWS, which has enabled us to generate a bolus of data. Then there's machine learning. And this has enabled us to restructure this data and rise out of the noise. And I'll share more about the models we're generating to gain more out of this useful data later. And finally, better curation of clinical metadata has enabled us to make meaningful statistical, uh, statistically significant studies possible. And these are retrospective studies that allow us to build multidimensional biomarkers. 
So all of this represents a shift in how we approach medicine and treatment decisions. Predictive immune modeling is built on the idea that we can do better than these outdated technologies, which are honestly pretty much throwing spaghetti at the wall and, and hoping that um, things will work. So we can transcend this big data idea and leverage dynamic RNA data to provide context that's much needed in precision medicine. But we're not just sequencing RNA data and stopping there. And predictive immune modeling is also the result of a need for a complete solution that can be deployed across the globe. And this approach includes building, utilizing, and analyzing RNA data from clinical specimens to build these powerful predictive multidimensional biomarkers. And then when we have the appropriate clinical studies, we can commercialize the downstream diagnostics that leverage these. And I'll share an example of a study like this in just a few minutes. But first, central to predictive immune modeling is the ability to model complex biological systems, such as immune cells in the tumor microenvironment using health expression models. But before I explain what these are, I first want to address a question that we're often asked at Cofactor. Why RNA? Isn't DNA easier to work with, more well understood? RNA is actually the sweet spot in the central dogma of biology. It's more labile than DNA, which means that it changes in response to diet, exercise, disease progression, and the therapies that we receive. So looking at RNA tells us more about our current state of health or disease than DNA does. And DNA remains static throughout our life. And so importantly, we can analyze RNA in a high throughput manner similar to DNA, which enables us to generate large data sets, which is necessary for building these models. And so while the industry has been focused on big data, Cofactor has actually leveraged our computational expertise to restructure RNA data into meaningful models. And these health expression models enable us to move signal out of noise and detect important biological changes with better sensitivity and specificity. Health expression models represent multiple features of biology that are important for predicting therapy response. Built using machine learning, the models not only capture the presence or absence of RNA signals, but also the dynamic expression levels that are influenced by the state of the disease, environmental effects, therapy, et cetera. And so each model in our current assay captures subtle nuances between immune cells that are known to be important in our body's fight against cancer. The immune profiling represents just the beginning. These models can be used to capture other facets of biology, disease, therapy response as well. And as I mentioned earlier, these models are an important part of our predictive immune modeling platform. They're a key differentiator. And how does this work in the real world? So when a patient is diagnosed with a solid tumor cancer, the first step is often a biopsy to remove the disease tissue, which is then formal and fixed and paraffin embedded for archiving and analysis. A small portion of this FFPE tissue is processed for our analysis, which starts by extracting the RNA from the tissue. The specific reagents in our immunoprism kit prepare the RNA for sequencing, and then the sequencing data that's generated is compared to our database of health expression models, which enables us to quantify the immune components present in that patient's tumor sample. An immune report is generated for each patient specimen analyzed, and then this data may be compared between samples collected in a clinical study. So in a clinical study, well-defined patient cohorts are recruited to ensure there's homogeneity in the patient population, the therapy delivered, and other clinical metadata. And this ensures that we can make confident, statistically significant assessments of the results that are generated. And so once we've generated immune profiles for each patient in the study, we use clinical data to define the patient cohorts. So for example, when our goal is to build a predictive diagnostic, we would group the patients as responders or non-responders to a therapy. And then all possible combinations of the immune signals measured are analyzed using machine learning, which allows us to identify the most predictive multidimensional biomarker to define the cohorts. Statistics for this biomarker, which evaluate the performance are then reported. And this includes analysis such as positive or negative predictive value, sensitivity and specificity, which are important to understanding how a downstream diagnostic might perform in the future. One particular study I'd like to highlight today is in recurrent and metastatic squamous cell carcinoma of the head and neck. We are immensely grateful for our partnership with Dr. Doug Atkins, the Director of Head and Neck Medical Oncology at Washington University and St. Louis's Medical School. Dr. Atkins is the primary investigator on this study, and he presented preliminary results earlier this year at the multidisciplinary head and neck meeting in Arizona. In this study, we screened over 100 patients and processed more than 90 specimens collected prior to immunotherapy treatment. 
And these patients had all received an immune checkpoint inhibitor and were either classified as responders or non-responders to this therapy. And in parallel to our analysis, a subset of these specimens were also processed using the current on-label diagnostic, which is a single analyte immunohistochemistry assay that measures pdl one expression levels. So this allows us to benchmark against the current gold standard. And in these preliminary results, we saw that at equivalent sensitivities, our multidimensional RNA model generated using predictive immune modeling outperformed the pdl one single analyte assay used in the clinic today. In the graphic shown here, these green icons represent patients who responded well to therapy or responders, and then the black icons represent those that did not respond well or non-responders. In particular, I'd like to highlight the number of false positives with the pdl one test on the left. So these are patients who were predicted to be responders and were given the therapy, but then did not respond well. And using our multidimensional biomarker, the false positives are significantly reduced as shown on the right. And this means that these patients have a better chance of getting a more appropriate treatment, saving the patient's time and potentially avoiding those adverse events. And perhaps less important, but also relevant to the economics of healthcare, matching patients more accurately also represents a cost savings for patients and insurance companies. So this was really exciting data for us and the team at Washington University. The preliminary data in this study shows that we can develop better diagnostic tools for predicting therapy response. And more importantly, building diagnostics with multidimensional biomarkers rather than the historic single analyte approach represents a promising new approach. And so today we're working in the recurrent and metastatic disease setting, but as immunotherapy is undergoing evaluation as a component of curative treatments for newly diagnosed disease, these multi-analyte predictive diagnostics will become even more important in the future. And so we want to support physicians making these difficult clinical decisions because helping them improve treatment uh, outcomes benefits all of their patients. As I mentioned earlier, one of the most important facets of study design is ensuring a homogeneous patient population is analyzed. Identifying, recruiting, and onboarding sites to participate in clinical studies is a bottleneck that all of us in the industry are facing. We are very eager to expand our partnerships to other institutions and collaborators who may wish to join the study such as this, and others that we are pursuing in a variety of different solid tumor indications. These collaborations will be essential to moving technology like this into clinical practice. A benefit of using predictive immune modeling, um, an approach such as what I've described here, is the ability to decentralize biomarker discovery in order to build these much needed matchmaker diagnostics. This enables standardization and discovery and implementation, which is needed in the field of diagnostics. We are grateful to the support um, as well of our partners, uh, in particular partners like AWS Cloud Services, which enables the analysis that I've shown here to be run either by cofactor scientists in our clinical laboratory or in our partner CRO laboratories by using our reagent kit and cloud-based informatics and with training provided through our certified service provider program. Achieving the lofty goals of precision medicine uh, cannot be done independently. It requires active collaboration between all players in the healthcare ecosystem including drug manufacturers, clinicians, payers, diagnostic developers, patient advocates, and others. And we truly believe that predictive immune modeling is the key to achieving this precision medicine goal because developing predictive diagnostics using multidimensional biomarkers are essential to matching patients with the treatments that they need. And the work I presented today is only possible thanks to the entire cofactor team and our collaborators. So I'd like to take a moment to acknowledge all of the folks that I work with. So thank you once more uh, to the team at AWS for putting together such a great program, uh, for finding a way for all of us to engage virtually during this unprecedented time. And at cofactor, we are so passionate about making precision medicine a reality through predictive immune modeling. And we would welcome new partnership and collaboration opportunities to help us achieve this mission. Uh, please feel free to reach out and engage with me if you have any questions about our technology or the results I printed, presented today. Thank you so much.